Today, we're talking about death. Not because I'm particularly morbid, but my aunt just passed away, and it turns out the price of a funeral is incredibly expensive. In fact, the average cost of a funeral is over $8,000 in the United States. But what if you and your next of kin can't afford a funeral? Today on The News with Brigida, we discuss the business of dying, the rise of pauper cemeteries, and why the Federal Trade Commission is putting the funeral industry on notice. Please, sir, a, a pauper cemetery for my poor dead body. The National Funeral Directors Association reports that the average cost of a funeral in the U.S. with casket and burial is $8,300, while the average cost of cremation is over $6,200. This does not include a burial plot, grave marker, or cemetery fees. A burial plot will run you an additional $3,500 on average, but like all real estate, it depends on where you live. In California, the average cemetery plot is over $7,000. Here in Los Angeles, it's over $11,000. This is something that is similarly expensive in other Western nations. For example, over in the United Kingdom, funeral expenses have reached record highs there, with the average cost exceeding the equivalent of $5,200 US dollars. So we still pay more here in the United States than they do over there, and they're in the middle of a dying crisis. You're telling me here in LA it costs $11,000 just to dig a hole and put a dead person in it. Yes. I mean, <laughs> all jokes aside, look, death is uncomfortable. You gotta laugh about it a little bit if you can. I'm not trying to be insensitive to anybody, but you know, death is a very uncomfortable taboo topic. Unfortunately, families are being pushed into debt and this is the last thing you need to think about when you're grieving the loss of a loved one. So what happens if someone just can't afford to bury their loved one? They're not alone. Burials for the poor are on the rise. And it's hard to get exact numbers because data in every state is collected differently. And programs to help people get assistance vary from state to state. But when families are too poor to pay for burial or cremation services, they can apply for public assistance as long as they can prove that they live below the poverty line. Some funeral assistance funds are controlled at the state level and others at the county or city level. But in at least 34 states, the county is the one that's responsible for burials for people who are too poor to afford services. So there are government programs for this situation. Okay, yes. that's good to know. But what is it that even costs this much to begin with, with burying someone? Well, death is a booming business. It costs the county money for a coroner to conduct autopsies to determine the cause of death, to file death records, pay for the casket, embalming, funeral home, and more. But in order to cut costs, some counties end up donating the bodies of the poor to science or they cremate them rather than funding burials. In other counties, there are pauper's cemeteries, better known as potter's fields, which are public cemeteries for the poor, which include the homeless, unknown or unclaimed dead, uh, missing people whose families aren't aware that their family member has been found, and old people who are left at nursing homes. And a lot of times people don't identify and claim bodies because they simply don't wanna be forced to pay for the burial services. Yikes, so there's a place to bury these poor, poor people. Yeah, and in Los Angeles, they have ceremonies every year for like thousands of people who are dead and unclaimed to bury their bodies in these public cemeteries. Right, and you know, burying someone takes up real estate, which is also costly. If I were gonna go, I'm, I'll sign my will right now. Cremation, it's on there. That's it's what I want me. too. I would definitely prefer <laughs> cremation. I don't like the idea of my corpse rotting in the ground. It just weirds me out. I also don't, I mean, personally, I wouldn't want people to come visit me when I'm dead. It's just like, and look at my dead body. Like talk about a bad photo day. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like a like an open like, I'm casket. With this yeah, I don't that like I can't that at all. Right now, but like when I'm dead, I would. Like... Tyson, I will embalm you and I will give you the makeup. No, it really is scary though. My brother was killed like 15 years ago almost, and I mean you were there that day actually. We were working together, and when I saw his body in the open casket, it freaked me out. I just kept looking at him, waking, waiting for him to like wake up and be like, just kidding, and his you know, spray painted on makeup really freaked me out. Yeah. So I am, I'm not a fan of the, the open casket. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm remembering that too from when my grandmother passed. You're not seeing them as they are, you're seeing like, a, like you said, a spray painted version of them, so. Ugh. Anyway, personal preference, I guess. 
as we talk about this difficult subject lightheartedly. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, you got to laugh about death because it is so uncomfortable and it does happen to everybody and it's a taboo subject. So this is, you know, also part of a repeated subject that we keep bringing up on the show, which is like everything is becoming more and more expensive, including dying. Dying is now unaffordable. Can't afford to die. <laughs> like, right. Hey, if you're dead, you have no expenses other than this. This is your final piece of real estate. This is your final expense. As things become more expensive, you're like, I just can't afford, I can't afford to live on this planet. But I also can't afford to die on this planet. It's, like, like, nah. <laughs> it's not funny. It's actually really it's, it's sad, a, but yeah, it is a problem. No-win scenario. It seems like with this becoming an, an expensive problem, uh, someone's got to do something about it. Like, what can we vote for? What can the government do? Well, right now, there is a crackdown on transparency issues within the funeral industry. In fact, the Federal Trade Commission, they do have strict requirements for funeral businesses. And this year, the FTC warned dozens of funeral homes across the country to stop violating the law by failing to provide accurate pricing information to customers. Let's say you've lost a loved one and you call a funeral home. You're trying to get accurate pricing information to help you through this difficult time. And the FTC found in a phone sweep that a lot of these funeral homes were not providing accurate information to people over the phone. So they're basically breaking something known as the funeral rule, which is supposed to protect consumers by allowing them to compare prices and pay for funeral services a la carte. But it doesn't necessarily lower the cost of death and all the expenses that come with it. So if you want to plan ahead, you can buy burial insurance to cover end of life expenses, or you can purchase a whole life insurance policy that would cover all your funeral costs and leave your family with a little bit of money in addition. Now that we're talking about this, to me right now, it seems archaic to bury someone in a hole in the ground. But uh, what's the future of, of cemeteries and death gonna be? It is archaic in my opinion as well, and some urban cemeteries report that they're running out of cemetery space. So there are other alternatives. People are turning more to green funerals, which you're burying a body in the ground and allowing it to decompose a little bit more naturally by putting bodies in caskets that are biodegradable, that break down naturally. Obviously, they have to regulate that it's not near water supplies so that, you know, the, the health code can be... So you're not uh, drinking your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're not drinking your uncle. Gross. There are some innovative things. They do cremation and then they take the ashes and they turn it into like a diamond or some kind of gemstone. That's something that people are doing. I think it would be cool if you took your ashes and just like shot them up in like a firework display. That would be kind of fun. So I don't know. I think you're right. It is a little bit archaic, but at the end of the day, where are you supposed to put all these bodies? Some yeah. people don't want cremation, I mean, so it's just personal preference until we run out of space. Then maybe we'll the, shoot them up into outer space. Who knows? The green funeral thing seems like the best idea for the future because, I mean, the human species is the only animal on the planet that doesn't allow our bodies to decay and become another part of the life cycle. Yeah, and all so. energy is recycled. I think it's, yeah. you know, that natural cycle has to happen of letting a body decompose naturally seems in my opinion, the best way to go, especially so we don't keep running out of space. What about the way the Vikings used to bury people? Didn't they used to like put them on a raft and just sell them out to the sea? And Yes, that is absolutely a thing, especially here in California where we have a lot of coastal towns. You can send a full body out to sea. There, is, there are funeral homes that prepare the body and put it in a biodegradable casket. They usually drill holes in the casket and put weights in it so that it will sink down. There are rules and regulations about how far out this has to be from land and away from fishing areas. And it has to usually be in waters that are like 600 feet deep so that the body goes out and becomes fish food ultimately. Great, that <laughs> sounds very natural. Yes. I think I'll do that. Okay, great. Tyson out to sea. So how do you want to go? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'm Brigida.